theme song for my life. So the theme song is not my favorite song, but just the song that I think um, talks to me about my present situation. It would be The Fire. It's a song by The Roots, uh, one of my favorite um, bands, rap group, if you like. And um, it's, it's called The Fire featuring John Legend. And the, the song has certain lyrics in it um, that really sort of, uh, if I can use the word ginger, they, 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 they get me going. You know, um, words like um, burn like a chariot, learn how to carry it, maverick, always above and beyond average. That, that's what I try to be. Uh, fuel to the flame that I train with and travel with. Something in my eyes that I'm so close to having the prize. Yeah. It's that feeling of being almost where you need to be. You've, you've almost succeeded at what you're trying to do, but you haven't quite. And so you're, you're giving it everything, every single day. Try and get there. That's why I love that song. So the future of digital transformation is something I'm very passionate about. Um, that word would be brave. I would say, and I'm thinking now, you know, with regards mainly to Nigeria, where we operate, I want, uh, I envision us having to be very brave in, in order to take advantage of this. Um, getting out there, not not waiting for everything to be right, not waiting for all the situations and, and, and all the scenarios and all the infrastructure to be in place, but to go out there and be brave and to achieve it regardless. That's the word I use, brave. So once again, I'm contextualizing now um, in Nigeria, the ever-evolving digital landscape for me talks to um, a huge country a large populace who are who are being impacted by digital transformation internationally and even locally, but not fully aware of what it's doing to us. Or should I say, we don't really have a strong strategy that talks about how we want to leverage digital transformation. So it's evolving. Things like ChatGPT are affecting us. It's affecting people in students uh, at university. Um, Document management, that's been around for a long time, but it's getting more cheap, it's, it's becoming more common. That's impacting organizations uh, and governments. Um, uh, the security landscape is also being impacted by satellite technology, uh, other forms of digital technology, it's impacting us left, right and center. But we just don't have a, um, we don't seem to have a roadmap, something that tells us this is what, what we want Nigeria to look like at the end of all this. And this is how we're going to ensure that we uh, leverage and incorporate all these uh, evolutions and all these changes. Yeah, that's what I'd say. We are definitely sleepwalking into the <laughs> into the digital revolution. We we are in it. We're in the middle of it. It's impacting us. I think I've been saying that so far, but we're, we're sleepwalking. There is so much to do in order to benefit from digital transformation. Digital transformation has been around for the longest time, but what does it really mean? It means that you collect data, you leverage data, and digitize it in such a way that it helps you to make decisions that are more accurate, that are more um, beneficial to your audience or to, to whoever you're trying to create value for. Digital transformation programs, uh, there's, a, there's a whole body of learning around this that people, you know, a lot of people in the country are not aware of. There are five specific kinds of domains that you're supposed to be doing this work in. Uh, one of the key ones is, uh, talks about capacity building. Sure, you want, to, you want to do document management, you know, you want to gather all this data around an industry. But once you've got that data, what do you do with it? The people who are supposed to use that data in order to, to generate value for your constituents. Um, do, do they know how to use a computer? Do, do they know the basics about, around decision-making, data-driven decision-making? There's a lot of work that needs to be done around empowerment, but also um, around how their processes change. So right now, everybody, let's say, in government is used to running a paper-based system. You introduce uh, a document management system and you don't tell them how their processes are going to change. You don't explain to them that um, signing is going to be digital now. What will happen is after you've made a lot of noise, you know, you're, you're the CEO, you're the leader, you're the decision maker. Once you go, they'll go right back to what they're used to because they, they've not been, it's not been explained to them and the process hasn't changed and the advocacy around the, the reasons why they should be doing things differently has not been done. And that's what um, needs to happen. 
fact that that's not happening. It's not just that, there's a whole range of things, but it doesn't seem to be happening right now. Um, you can hire a resource. Or, uh, so yes, I, I'm joking, but you, you can you can hire a resource or you can hire uh, any, any number of the companies out there that specialize in this type of work. Um, it's specialist type of work. It's not, it's not what you learn typically um, while you're doing the business degree or the MBA that you need to do to leave the organization. The truth is that collecting data in Nigeria isn't easy. It's not everyone that can do it. And we need to collect data. So our data sets, although I know that there are organizations that are doing, you know, making waves and, and, and breaking boundaries, you know, like the National Bureau of Statistics and other organizations like that, the truth is that to sustainably collect data, use data, a lot of that data has to be collected. And if it's collected, it needs to be stored. It needs to be, um, you need to create dashboards. There's a lot of specialist work that goes into all these things I'm talking about. You need a partner. You need to be able to get a partner who has the ability not just to do the work, but also to understand the domain, understand the space. <coughs> Why am I saying that? Um, a company from another country, you know, that doesn't understand the challenges that Africa has, that Nigeria has, will have challenges collecting data and interpreting data as well as a company that's local, but that has the capacity to do so. And that's why I'm pushing and have always been pushing for adoption of more local based agencies to do this kind of work specifically. But yeah, you need a partner. Well, Generative AI, everybody's talking about that. Um, there, there, there are lots of advances, uh, sorry, there, there are lots of things that will happen um, without being a data scientist and a prophet. It, a prophet it's, it's almost impossible for me to guess what will happen. One thing I can say though is that the people who will leverage it correctly have to have the correct mindset. Yeah, we have to disabuse ourselves of the, um, the notion that AI is bad. So whether it's good or whether it's bad, right now, for a country like Nigeria has very little import. What's more important is that we're leveraging it to be competitive. Eventually that decision, or those decisions around the, the goodness or the badness of it, will um, we'll be faced with those and, and, and there'll, be, there'll be moral decisions that we have to take and other kinds of decisions that we have to take. But the truth is that most of us will not be involved in that decision making. Most of us are supposed to make sure that we leverage what we already have, which is a very powerful technology that can help us to translate the the dreams of data that we have in this country that we have no idea about. But you're not going to do that unless you have the right attitude. And that attitude is to engage. Say to yourself, I will engage. I won't sit back and wait and let 10, 20 other organizations do something while I'm sitting on the fence. Uh, be brave, engage with the technology, find out how, it, how, how best it can work for you. So change, have the mindset that you're not going to allow this revolution pass you by and you'll do whatever it takes in order to make sure you leverage it to the benefit of your constituents or whoever it is that you're trying to please as an organizational leader. Um, my advice would be to engage. Don't let this um, pass you by. There are a lot of innovations and we're, in a, we're very innovative people. There are a lot of innovations that companies have taken up already that are giving people competitive advantage right across the country, in logistics, um, e even in uh, oil and gas, in, in all sorts of areas, in telecoms, one of the, uh, in finance. Uh, and one of the reasons that's happening is because people in the private sector are being very brave about uh, embracing these new technologies and understanding that it's not that hard for us to pick it up ourselves and do something with it ourselves. So what are we gonna do? Are we just gonna sit by and say, hey, the, the world will pass us by it's not going to pass us by. What's going to happen is that um, the, the private sector or some other sector will, will pick up this technology and use it. And we'll have this, this um, disjointed growth where you've got huge leaps and bounds being made by certain individuals and certain organizations in certain sectors and the rest being left behind. Whereas if we have a strategy that takes us all along, that growth can be a bit more um, shared. Uh, and that responsibility lies with our leaders not just politically, but even our business leaders, to come together to form a brave set of people to build a brave new world, a brave new Nigeria. So yeah, that would be my advice. Be brave, 
and engage 